Hello and welcome. I hope that you are having a fantastic day. Today we're going to talk about is cryptocurrency life changing? Is cryptocurrency going to change the lives of people around the world? I think the conclusion we'll come to will surprise you. So let's get into it. Is cryptocurrency life-changing like a smartphone? Now, we're going to give you ideas. My YouTube channel is about giving you ideas to help you take profits and avoid losses. Help us out. Smash that like button. Subscribe. Click on the bell and click all. Kind of like makes a little song. Smash like, subscribe, bell, and all. Um, now, I'm not a financial advisor. And this is not financial advice. This is my opinion. Cryptocurrency involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for every investor. I hope you'll read the rest of this paragraph. It is critical for investing in anything, but also especially in cryptocurrency. Now, smartphones have changed everybody's lives. It has been remarkable how different our lives are today compared to 10 years ago or even 15 years ago with the advent of smartphones. Now, I want you to know we're going to dig into a little bit about how smartphones changed people's lives, but the majority of this video is going to be digging into different aspects of how cryptocurrency either has already started changing people's lives or is on the verge of changing lives. So let's dig into it. So some of the things that smartphones have done in our lives is of course they've allowed us to make phone calls. But with a smartphone, you've got maps, you can use it for navigation, you can get local business reviews, you can watch videos, you can play games, you can track airline flights, news, weather, uh, if you have a smart home, you might have your garage door uh, hooked up to your smartphone so that you can open and shut the garage or maybe change the temperature in your home. You might have business apps such as salesforce.com where you can actually conduct a business right on your smartphone and do a sale. Um, there's stock and cryptocurrency apps. I mean, there are thousands and thousands of apps that are built into smartphones. Well, cryptocurrency is going the same path. Cryptocurrency has some amazing applications out there. Now there's thousands, I mean, there's like, uh, there's, there's, I've heard estimates anywhere from 2,000 to 6,000 different cryptocurrencies out on the market today. We're not gonna cover all of that. We're only gonna cover a handful of ideas, but some of these ideas actually Virtually all of these ideas are already being used and in production, and they're quite interesting. Uh, cryptocurrency is being used as a store of value. Everybody talks about Bitcoin in that regard. There's smart contracts, there's cross-border payments, there's decentralized exchanges, credit cards, bankless loans, file storage, collectibles, product IDs, personal IDs, and healthcare are all being covered by cryptocurrency. Now with Bitcoin, Bitcoin is a store of value. It is open source, public, borderless, neutral, and censorship resistant. Um, open source meaning anybody can read the code that runs Bitcoin. Public in the sense that anybody can read the blockchain on Bitcoin. Borderless meaning that the servers that run Bitcoin, they're all over the world. They're located in every country. You, you virtually, no matter what country you're in, there are servers that run the Bitcoin uh, open source code. They're neutral. They, there's nobody that kind of runs Bitcoin or controls Bitcoin. It is a neutral entity. And finally, Bitcoin is censorship resistant meaning it's very difficult for somebody to take your funds, take your money, etc. Now, that's Bitcoin. Ethereum is where we get smart contracts from. And Bitcoin, Ethereum is similar to Bitcoin, but it gives you the ability to do programmable blockchain. And so I did not do that square very well. I'm just going to get rid of it. Um, Bitcoin. 
Ethereum gives you the ability to do smart contracts and gives you a programmable blockchain. Bitcoin does have the ability for you to write contracts to it, but those smart contracts on Bitcoin don't have the functionality or the utility that they do on Ethereum. And today there are thousands of applications written on Ethereum, but Ethereum is not Ethereum is not the only blockchain out there that allows you to write smart contracts. There's at least six to 12 others that are very large, comparable to Ethereum. They're not as big as Ethereum. Ethereum is number two in terms of uh, market capitalization, uh, but that doesn't mean that those other ones won't survive. It, it, it doesn't have anything to do about their success or, or how good they are. If you're writing a smart contract, you, it would be a good idea for you to, be, to research out the different blockchains that are available for you for you to write your smart contracts. You may find something other than Ethereum works better for your specific application. And so smart contracts are out there by the thousands, many of them on the Ethereum blockchain, but some are on others. We also have cross-border payments through Ripple and XRP. Ripple facilitates cross-border payments for banks and institutions. And then Uniswap is a DEX. A DEX stands for a Decentralized Exchange. And so Uniswap is a decentralized exchange that makes it easy for users to swap an ERC-20 token for another ERC-20 token without the need of a, of a centralized intermediary. With a DEX, Traders do not have to deposit their tokens on an exchange and be exposed to the security risks of a centralized exchange. Uh, traders keep those tokens in their own wallets. And so the big advantage to uh, a DEX, actually there's quite a few. So the first advantage I think of when I think of a decentralized exchange is that I can keep my cryptocurrency in my own wallet. But another advantage of a DEX is they can be cheaper and faster than a centralized exchange. When you look at, um, say, Coinbase, Coinbase is the largest United States-based uh, cryptocurrency exchange. Coinbase took millions upon millions upon millions of dollars to set up. They have uh, thousands of employees. They've got business offices located in high-rise buildings, and so they pay a huge amount of money towards leasing that office space or buying that office space. I don't know which they actually do. I'm guessing they lease it, but they may actually own a lot of that. Uh, on and on go the expenses, whereas with Uniswap, they have 10 employees. They have a contract that runs on the Ethereum blockchain in that smart contract, or in another words, a smart contract really is just a computer program. That computer program that runs on the Ethereum network makes it possible for a person to buy one token and sell it for another token. So maybe they want to buy Ethereum and then uh, trade it for ZEC or XRP, or I'm sorry, not XRP. XRP is on a different blockchain. Um, but there's about 2,000 different tokens out there on the Ethereum network from the FUN token, ONT, OMG, um, uh, ZEC is on Ethereum, on and on the list goes. So there's a bunch of different cryptocurrencies that run on Ethereum and you can trade cryptocurrency A for cryptocurrency B right on Uniswap and you'll get a great price most of the time. I would always be very careful in terms of the price and check out other resources um, because if you do your due diligence you'll find times that other, other exchanges will get you a better price than you can get on Uniswap but oftentimes Uniswap will get you the best price out there. So as always do your homework. So that's a decentralized exchange, and it's really interesting that it's quite autonomous. It's, it's uh, not controlled by any controlling authority. And so because it's decentralized and there's no actual owners, it gives it a lot of power similar to the way that Bitcoin has power because it's not owned by any particular company. There's nobody that you can take to court 
um, and say, you know, for the, the people in charge for the government to say, hey, we want you to shut down because nobody's running it. They would have to shut down the Ethereum network in order to stop uh, Uniswap. So in order for this exchange to actually get shut down, they would have to shut down Ethereum because Uniswap runs on Ethereum. Dash, are we running fast? No, we're doing credit cards. On the Dash network, its purpose and its design is to give credit card access, uh, cryptocurrency credit cards. Um, but as most people know, when you're dealing with the Visa or MasterCard or many of the other companies, they charge merchants fees of 3% and more. And of course that gets passed on to the customer in higher prices. By using blockchain, Dash can cut those expenses by 99%. And instead of a 3% charge uh, on, to merchants, it's usually about one penny or less per transaction. And so Dash is out there to work on credit cards, but the Ripio credit network, which is extremely popular in South America, is, is doing bankless loans. Uh, Ripio is, Basically, if you wanted a loan, you can go to the Ripio credit network and you can swap cryptocurrencies and get a loan out to pay bills or pay whatever you need. And then you would pay that back through the Ripio credit network. Um, and this network in, it facilitates investor to consumer lending without the hefty transaction fees that are charged in traditional banking processes. So think about it for a second. Normally, you would go down to your local bank, you'd talk to a guy in a suit. Now, think about that for a second. You're talking to a guy in a suit. They have to pay that guy in a suit. And, and because he's wearing a suit, typically guys in suits don't make 50 cents an hour. They make big bucks. And in order to pay him big bucks, they have to get that money from somewhere. They get that money from the people they give loans to. And so the loan ends up costing you more than it needs to. Whereas with the Ripio credit network, because it's done on blockchain and through cryptocurrency, there is no guy in a suit. It's all done electronically through programming and programming code. And so that program doesn't need to be paid the same kind of wage the guy in the suit does. That's why it's cheaper. And because it's on the blockchain and on the internet, it's faster and it's in some cases easier. That's why in South America where people are living in countries where they're having such a huge problem with their currencies are using things like the Ripio Credit Network, RCN, in order to get by. So it's definitely worth looking into. Next on our list is file storage with Filecoin. Now this is kind of interesting. The objective is to ensure file storage is permanent and distributed across the web. Contrast this with centralized cloud storage solutions such as Amazon Web Services, Google Cloud, or Dropbox, where data is stored on servers owned by private corporations. Now if your stuff is stored on somebody else's servers and it's a private corporation, that company could go bankrupt or that company could decide that they're turning your files over to whoever, you know, somebody comes in with a lawsuit, the government comes in, um, they can be shut down at any time. And so there's greater risk and greater exposure by using some of those different services. Whereas by using Filecoin, because it's a distributed network, there isn't a, a company to go and shut down. There isn't somewhere for a government to go and say, hey, take that off the internet. We don't like the fact that you're uh, dissing our, the, our government or our president or whoever, um, whatever the situation is. And so because it becomes, that at that point, your files become a permanent record on the internet that nobody else can take down but you. Non-fungible tokens. Now these are collectibles. Non-fungible tokens are unique, rare, and indivisible. Example includes crypto collectibles like NFL and NBA cards, digital artworks, a ticket to an event, and an in-game item, 
and items in a virtual universe, a real world asset like real estate, car titles, etc. Now, some of this as far as like the real estate and car titles, while it's possible it has not been extensively used, but given the infrastructure has been built and that it can be done cheaper, faster, safer, easier, uh, and in an un uneditable, in, in um, trying to think of the word, it's just slipped my mind, but unchangeable format, uh, it has a lot of potential. Where it also is getting used today is the NFL and the NBA have signed up with different tokens in order to create playing cards for players. And the interesting thing is, is that those are unique cards. So with Bitcoin, every Bitcoin is exactly the same. There's not, if you have, if you have one Bitcoin and your friend has one Bitcoin, there's no difference between the two of them. Whereas with, uh, if you have an NBA card for Michael Jordan and somebody else has an NBA card for Michael Jordan, they might be different. One of them might be signed personally by Michael Jordan and done in a verifiable way on the blockchain. It can be proven that that actually was Michael Jordan who left a note with that particular playing card. And because it's on the blockchain, it's permanent as long as that blockchain is still active. Um, now with like uh, Ethereum, uh, Ethereum has thousands of nodes all over the world by thousands of different people who are running the Ethereum blockchain. So if that non-fungible token was an Ethereum card or running on the Ethereum blockchain, then as long as Ethereum is up and running, that card is in existence. And it's the same way with any of the other non-fungible tokens that are on other blockchains other than Ethereum. As long as that blockchain is up and running, that particular non-fungible token exists. Another thing that a lot of people are doing is artwork. I've seen several different uh, individuals and companies, they create customized artwork and you can purchase that artwork as a non-fungible token. The reason why they use that fancy word fungible is because non-fungible means it's each one is individualized Fungible means each one is identical. So with Bitcoin, those are fungible because uh, Bitcoin, every Bitcoin is identical to every other Bitcoin. And with uh, non-fungible tokens, they can be individualized. And so one could have a personalized signature, whereas another one doesn't. Or if they were titles for cars, then one would be the title to a specific car with a specific serial number and another would be a title to a different car with a different serial number, but they might be the same token that covers lots of different vehicles. So that's the idea behind a non-fungible token, and that's already here. What about product IDs? This is another one that's actually already getting used. One example of that is VChain. Now, as I go through these different examples, keep in mind, I'm only giving you one example for each topic, but there are uh, dozens or hundreds or thousands of other cryptocurrencies for each of these different topics that we're covering. And in the case of VeChain, some of those are done with cryptocurrencies on a blockchain and others are just simply done straight out as a blockchain. So let's get into it. VeChain allows brands to digitize products on the blockchain, creating a link between the physical product and a unique blockchain identity. This identity provides traceability for the life of the products from manufacturing, transportation, wholesale, retail, and services. Now here's where the product ID becomes really, really useful. In China, they had a lot of problems with uh, uh, forgers forging baby formula and what they put inside the can of baby formula was not enough for the baby to survive and so they had babies that died because the formula they bought was junk but it looked like a reputable company's formula. And so by using the VeChain and the product ID available from VeChain, consumers are able to take their smartphone, look at a QR code on the product 
and verify that this is a legitimate product or it's not a legitimate product because it was, it was uh, transacted on the blockchain. Another way that uh, VeChain is getting used is Walmart uses VeChain in order to validate the authenticity of pork and the safety of pork that's getting shipped to Walmart stores all around the world. So if there's a problem with a piece of pork, they can trace it all the way back to the farm, even if that farm is located in China. Now VeChain is, and if you own a Louis Vuitton purse, Louis Vuitton, one of the chief executives from Louis Vuitton is the one that actually created VeChain. And so naturally Louis Vuitton and their purses are utilizing the VeChain network and you'll see a little QR code that's on your Louis Vuitton purse that you can use to make sure that this is not a knockoff or a copy made by somebody illegitimate, but this is the real thing. And so with those kinds of things that people can utilize just with, you know, their smartphone, uh, a lot of people are able to do things uh, to provide a product ID and to be able to trace back that product all the way to its origin, as well as handle things like customer service. If you're having problems, then they'll know when those problems occurred and how they were handled and what was done in order to solve those problems, et cetera, et cetera. And so it creates a lot of traceability and a lot of openness that wasn't available uh, prior to that. And so those things are very useful. In fact, Walmart, I, I wanted to mention this and I almost went on without mentioning it. There's, there's another uh, uh, product out there that's on blockchain only, and that's the IBM Food Network. Now Walmart uses the IBM Food Network in the United States. And so maybe you're growing apples in the state of Washington. Well, Walmart has mandated that all produce and meats uh, must be on the uh, IBM Food Network chain. In other words, when the, when the grower puts those apples into a barrel and that barrel is getting shipped off to the Walmart distribution centers, that barrel is marked with a QR code and that QR code creates a permanent unchangeable record on the IBM Food Network blockchain and that particular record will trace that barrel of apples all the way to the grocery store where the consumers are purchasing it. And so if there's any problems with that produce or any problems with the meat, they can trace that back to the farm where it started and identify where the problem was in hours instead of it taking days and weeks. So that, that helps provide a much faster and much more accurate way of sourcing out where bad food originated from and getting those problems fixed in the food supply. So that's quite important when it comes to blockchain. Another one is personal ID. And so there's a service called ION and it's by Microsoft. Microsoft believes every person needs a decentralized digital identity that that individual owns and controls. This self-owned identi self identity would provide a secure encrypted storage of personal data and rely on decentralized systems, blockchains, and distributed ledgers to anchor their identifiers. And so this is being released but isn't in widespread usage yet uh, but you may keep your eye out for ION by Microsoft you may hear more and more about that in the coming weeks and months now solve is a healthcare solution and solve is actually a cryptocurrency but that cryptocurrency is linked to the solve network and up to 30% of medical bills goes towards paying administrative costs. Solve.care, their platform improves care outcomes by reducing healthcare administration costs and substantially reducing duplication, waste, abuse, and fraud. And so where I've heard this being used is Solve is, is teaming up with insurance companies, hospitals, and individual doctors 
so that they can have patient records put into an immutable, unchangeable blockchain so that that can A, be shared by those who have a need to know the information and B, that it would help, like I said, reduce waste, reduce cost. I mean, when 30% of your medical bills are just going to shuffling paperwork and doing all of the different forms and legalese stuff, that can be, that can be streamlined. And that's part of what solve is solving. So finally, I, I want to tell you a little bit about myself and, and where I'm coming from. I've, I've been in the computer industry for 20 years. And during those 20 years, I've worked on lots of different computer projects, done a lot of different computer programming, et cetera, et cetera. Well, I got interested in blockchain and cryptocurrency about two years ago. And during the last two years in my evenings and weekends, I've written a computer program that helps me figure out when to buy and sell cryptocurrencies. And then I started saying, well, you know, I could benefit from this, but I could also share it with people I care about and let them benefit from it. And I tried to figure out a good way to do that. And the best solution I found to date is eToro. And so I set up what's called a copy trader account on eToro. And if you go out to eToro and you do a search for Luminate Algo Trader, you'll find me on, on eToro and you will be able to copy my trades. Now, the nice thing is, is once you've set up your eToro account, funded it with $200, $200 is eToro's minimum, you can click this copy trade button. And by clicking this copy trade button, it will, you'll be able to tell it, I want to do 200 or I want to do 1,000 or I want to do 500,000, whatever dollar amount you want to copy my trades with, you'll be able to do that. And you don't have to lift a finger after that point. Every time I make a buy or a sell on a particular cryptocurrency on eToro, that buy or sell is automatically done in your account at the same dollar prices um, automatically. So you don't have to lift a finger. You don't have to think about it. You can do it as long as you want. You can stop it at any time. You can put in a stop loss and say, look, if, if this goes down more than a certain percent, take me out of it. So you have ultimate control, but it also gives you the chance to benefit from this computer program I've written. Now my computer program utilizes mind numbing math and that mind numbing math runs through thousands of mathematical calculations for each recommendation it makes. And so you, like I said, you can find me on eToro or you can just go to this website eToro slash people Luminate Algo Trader. Um, now, as a final note, eToro has given me the ability to offer you a $50 limited offer bonus. So if you use this link here, when you create your eToro account, this is only good for people who are creating a brand new eToro account. But if you use this link here to create your eToro account and then deposit uh, $200 or more, and then finally follow a uh, copy trade my copy, my copy my trades, you will get a $50 bonus within about 30 to 45 days if you're one of the first 10 people. Now, I'm sorry I can't offer this to everybody, but right now, today is December 18th, 2020, and it's currently 5.32 p.m. Uh, Central Standard Time in the United States. And right now, this is still a good offer. We don't have 10 people that are copying me at the moment. And so you can jump on board and take advantage of this. And with a $200 um, investment into copying my trades, eToro will give you 50 bucks deposited straight into your account. That gives you a total of 250 bucks. And so that would, that would help with any losses that you might incur. But I've seen with my algorithm, in fact, in the month of November, we had a 49% gain just in the 30 days in the month of November. So check it out. It might be for you. Again, this is not financial advice. This is my opinion. And I did want to share that opportunity with you. So in conclusion, how can I be a service to you? Do you have any questions? Do you have 
thoughts? Is there something I didn't explain very well? Leave the comments in the comment section below. And in the meantime, I hope that you'll like, subscribe, and hodl. And hey, do me a favor and have a fantastic day.